Hey everybody, guess who it is? Hey Trader Rockstar, Sunday evening edition, breaking news. Future's about to open in a couple few, few hours. Still got a few hours in front of us, but I wanted to go, uh, get on here fast and just kind of uh, talk about the upcoming elections and the effect it might have on the markets and what I think is going to happen on Monday here, which is uh, right around the uh, corner here because it is uh, Sunday, e Sunday afternoon. Like I said, we have... Um, Future is going to open up at 6 o'clock. Maybe I'll check in again before the end of the night just to see how things are. But we left off Friday, and I sent out the watch list. I sent out a kind of a, an updated market radar, but I want to go into some, some other things today. But I did send out a watch list earlier um, talking about, you know, my prediction for a nice rally uh, on Monday. And uh, we're going to just dig down a little bit deeper on the charts uh, we were watching some, you know, I've really been paying attention to this this process down down here, the divergence, the nice run up that we had. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are looking at that 4,000 to 4,100 level. Um, there's people down there looking at 3,200. We're in the middle of this range. We have a few months left probably in this uh, in this cycle with the Fed and how we're going to be dealing with the interest rates, but this is coming, you know, we're actually coming towards the, the latter part of the game here. Um, so that's probably being priced in, and the only big event we have in front of us right now is the midterm elections. And the midterm elections are going to uh, happen this Tuesday. And when that happens, um, you know, it'll all, you know, they're going to be talking about the, the, the effects to the stock market pretty much. Uh, especially those in the financial traders and stuff, we'll start to focus on that, probably start to focus on it tomorrow. And that's another reason I think we're going to get a rally because I do believe that the, the Republicans are favored to at least, um, you know, take the, uh, the House and possibly the Senate. Uh, but either one, yeah, is, I think, is a high probability. And... In worst case, even if they got both, you know, with Biden having the veto power, that kind of sets the government up into what they call a gridlock situation. And the markets like gridlock. And they always focus on this. They always want to have, uh, you know, an equally split Congress where they're always arguing and not being able to pass any new legislation, use new taxes usually. Um, and that's usually pro uh, stock market because it deals with a lot with business and business taxes and stuff. So that's that is going to be all over the news this week. This week because that's a major thing. And I don't think it's been taken into account yet. Uh, I don't think it's been priced in. So um, that's one of the reasons I do think we could see that. <clears throat> just a couple here um, on taxes. Here I'm just reading some uh, some news on the upcoming election and, and and some data investors are betting investors are betting on a big republican wave in the midterm elections if republicans take at least one chamber of Cong congress in tuesday's midterm election that will likely res result in more gridlock which the market usually loves according to data from elderman financial engines the s p had an annualized return of 16.9 percent since 1948 during the nine years when the democrats we're in the House, and the Republicans had the majority in both Chamber of Commerce. That compares to 15.1% during the periods of full Democratic control. Uh, and some other ones, that's not a big difference. I wouldn't be getting too excited about that. But um, what do midterms mean for markets? If Repub Republicans get the House, taxes, tax hikes are likely dead in the water, said David Wagner, portfolio manager. Uh, Aptus Capital Advisors, Republicans may be less likely to approve a windfall tax on oil company profits and are generally not in favor of tax hikes on the wealthy. The markets are also betting that some sectors could get a boost, even if Republicans take control of the House or Senate and presumably make it more difficult for President Biden to get laws passed. That's because there's some areas of consensus for the White House and Republican lawmakers. Um... GOP sweep could lead to more spending on defense, said Wagner. Increasing the budget for defense seems to be a bipartisan issue. The House passed a record high defense budget proposal this summer. Um, <clears throat> and then some other things. So, you know, it's, it's really going to come down to uh, the midterms. I think we're going to get a little rally into that Monday, Tuesday. And after that, we'll see what the results are. Maybe we'll do a... Oh, actually, we will do a... Um, 
we will be doing a uh, election night broadcast this Tuesday. Election night broadcast live here at Day Training Radio. Put it on your calendars. Election election night. We'll cover the election. I'm sure the futures might actually get some some movement there. So this one seems to be in in the focus a lot. Um, so all right. So with that said, let's take a, just a look at a couple levels. I mean, there's it, we're. We left off in a good way, a nice reversal yesterday. We, if we got that gap up, do we gap up and we take out these, these highs up here? And that's our pivot area. That's our top pivot area. I put a um, candle over here. This is that our, that was that one candle I wanted to really pay attention to over here. And it basically now is, you know, it's setting up the whole the area. This whole high up here is going to be our pivot as we broke that down. And now actually under here is going to be another pivot now. Uh, because of that nice candle we had yesterday. So we have two pivots. We're real tight, you know, getting real tight here. And I think the first pivot that goes is really the directional of this, this next um, medium-term rally or drop. Um, we could roll over and take out the pivot below us, or we could rally and take out the high pivot and probably break us out of these downward channels. I mean, all, everything's lined up uh, more of a bullish way right now. I just I'm going with the call of upside based off the election, and that should be, we we should see that Monday Tuesday, and then after that after the election we'll see how it, you know we might actually get a follow through rally, if everything turns into gridlock and they start to focus on that. Um, a couple of negatives on the chart: the daily stochastics are not oversold yet, all right, and they got oversold and they had a nice little divergence up there too, and they dropped off so. You know, there might be a little more pain there. The weekly is actually kind of bullish. It didn't, didn't really turn back over. Um, and then if hourly here, well, that won't... Uh, hourly looks pretty good. I mean, we came off of a choppy base here and finally got a little rally. But we didn't take out the, the you know, that recent high, which is, this is the one we're watching. Um, and we didn't get, we didn't get even, you know, this is where we're going to be focus on eventually but right now whenever you look back at the chart those will give us a good indication if we can get through this third you know probably back over 3800 would be a major major move on this market 3800 and now that's 3070 i think we could do that i think we could do that tomorrow all right so that's my update breaking news as a, as it uh as you can hear my music you hear my beautiful <laughs> breaking news music I was messing around earlier here. But again, oh yeah, this is Johnny. No, Johnny, you can't say it's, it's Johnny. Stay Trader Rockstar here with a special news bulletin. Take it, Johnny. All right. Um, all right. That's it. We're going to get uh, get this on the way. The uh, I was going to show you something on the Rockbot. Maybe I will show you fast. I was doing some back testing t uh, today. I, I always go back to the week and I just do a, a random roll through of the uh, the bot. And I know a lot of people are interested in the bot, but a lot of people think they can just put the bot on on manual and it's just gonna you know be a perfect running cash machine. And that's not how it is. You have to understand what the bot is. It was built as an indicator to identify divergences, but not all divergences are equal. And you have to set the parameters depending on what markets you are looking at. And there are better time frames to trade. So one minute is going to be the choppiest, and you're going to get the most trades. So let's take a look at. Let's go to the one minute. I'm just going to put the value down to one minute. I'm going to keep everything here the same. I'm going to keep everything the same. Uh, we're going to use ten just for a, a benchmark here. And again, we knew that this weekend, this week, past week was a very news. I was watching for divergence, and I didn't see too many great divergences. Uh, it was a lot of chop leading up to the Fed meeting. Um, well, this is this is the chart. There's a couple right there, but let's take a look at the summary. See the summary, it had us 203 trades, 203 trades, 63%. Um, so that's really not not that good. I mean, this thing has to be over 70%. It normally is. So you could tell it was a very choppy, choppy uh, the, uh, session. You know, and that just shows you you don't want you don't want part of that. Um, now if we go to the three minute time frame, we'll probably see something a little bit different because the three minute, um, you know, divergences seem seem to work 
best if you have that time um, to kind of let them work out. The one minute is so tight with the, with the stops and the way the divergence is set up. It really takes, you know, you can get stopped out and it could actually still be a good divergence, but just because of the, you know, the volatility in these markets and how fast they move sometimes on one candle, you can actually get stopped right out in the beginning. All right, so let's see the three minute time frame. All right, drum roll. Same same parameters. All right, big difference there. That's not even seventy percent, but a big difference in profit. There's a profitable tr trade, um, profit factor of one point four one, and that's the same same criteria. So if you ran it on the three minute t time frame, you you know you'd be the, you'd be banking here. Profits per month, two thousand nine hundred sixty-one, and again, every situation, every day is a little bit different. You have to actually realize that. Now, I like to go to the charts after I do some, and I said, "All right, why? You know, the ones that didn't work. Well, I remember actually some of this. There was news here, eleven thirty. I remember this, and when you have something that's working, and all of a sudden news comes out, and there was a lot of news this week. So a lot of the divergence happened around those news items, and they got. They got really, um, you know, great, great setups here. I'm just, you know, and they take profits. And again, pay attention to my criteria here. Um, I, I tighten up my trailing stops. So it doesn't give, a, a, you know, it takes profit. And again, I'm going out on a bigger time frame too. So this is kind of a, it could, it, it'll probably hit its profits, but even if we're in a downward tr channel, you know, it takes profits, it has a trailing stop, and it protects itself. So it even has a shot to getting that just a little bounce, <clears throat> which is good. Um, and that's, you know, there's short, there's a short-sided um, script, too, that we can run, and you'll see that. <clears throat> but again, I just what I wanted to show you is the difference between the one minute running the one minute and running the, the, um, the three minute. Now let's move it to the five minute. Now let's take a look again. What was it? We had 59 trades, 69.49, but a nice profit, profit factor of 1.41. All right, so I'm going to do the five in it now. And it's the same amount, it's 33 trades, 69.7, same, same thing basically on the three and the five. It's three and the five, basically the same thing. All right, well, now you have, look at this. I just switched it to equity um, extended hours, um, real time. This is, doesn't include the overnight trade. So take a look at this. This is the, um, just during the day session. And this is running the five minute time frame. Now it's not giving you as many trades, of course, overnight, but with the five minutes on, it's 100%, it's only giving you, what is that, six? Six trades, um, but 100 percent though. I mean, <laughs> that's uh, six. Let's take a look at, uh, and that's on the five-minute time frame, and that that's overnight. No, that's not overnight. That's not overnight for the week. Let's take a look at which ones. I'm going up here, trailing stop. Wow. Hmm. It's like it started at 10 o'clock. It's not even starting. Equities.
So that's equity. Sorry. So that's using the probably the uh, four o'clock to eight o'clock time frame, and not doing the overnight, which is which is damn good. I mean, it is it is a nice nice little results there. Now let's see if we go back to the um, I guess it would be the default use an instrument default and then take a look at how many trades it is so that was 10 trades 90 percent or 10 trades 100 percent depending on three or five now it's 33 so that takes in account some overnight trades so and that's where your losses came in eight, eight of them overnight um so you got a profit but you know that's something that you have to consider too it's not putting this thing overnight being there in front of it i mean it's so important to understand the concepts behind it what it's looking for and, and, and help let it be a tool for you all right you can run it on your own thing let it take your entries you know take put the uh, oops i just lost everything but put the put the um put the chart connect it to your you know broker use the ib broker and track the brokers and uh, whatever you need connect it and let it take the, let it take the entries you know and then you manage it, you know, it'll, you know, you could set the parameters to go in as much as, and that way you're there, uh, you can analyze it. Usually, most likely, you're going to get some upside, and then you use your exit strategy, your new exit strategy, depending on what market conditions are. If the market's trending down, you want to take that off on a first rotation of your 9-3 stochastic. You always want to do that. I mean, that's just a safe thing to do. That's money in the bank. Money in the bank. You know, if you get into that habit, you know, maybe it becomes a little boring, but, um, you know, it does, there is some great opportunities, and you will get those great, great opportunities, long and short side, too, and let's not forget the short side is a, a big side of it, it is a big side, it's an equal part. I'm just looking, just going back to, again. That's where we left off. And again, six o'clock's around the corner. I want to send this video out. Again, uh, look for me at Day Trading Radio tomorrow morning. We'll be there early, probably uh, 7.30, probably even earlier. It's going to be a busy week, so we're going to get in early. Um, if you want to get into our, our uh, chat room with all our great traders, head over to uh, daytradingradio.com and, and sign up for a, uh, a trial or become a member and support the site and make some money. All right, we'll see you then.